Uh, welcome to this webinar from CoCut Systems. My name is David and I'm from a fire service in southern Sweden. Uh, together with us today uh, we are going to have some guests. Uh, P.O. Malmqvist is here and he's from the Swedish Civil Contingency Agency uh, and he's going to talk a little bit around a project around electrical fires in vehicles. Uh, Daniel Scott is also here and he is going to talk about uh, the method around this uh, problem uh, with fires in electrical vehicles. And at last we have Hovard Hauge from Westfold in Norway and he uh, has experienced an uh, actual car fire uh, in, from real life that he is going to tell us about. For us in the Saab Fire Service, we have new challenges for this uh, type of uh, maybe difficult fires in electrical vehicles. The record of uh, selling uh, of these vehicles has increased the last few years uh, a lot, but likelihood of uh, electrical vehicles, uh, the fire is, is uh, maybe low, but the consequences can be severe if we cannot put it out or let them burn. Uh, so, what for us as a fire service, um, we have to face new situations, maybe new mythology, uh, we have to know more stuff and know more risks uh, around this to make it safe for us, and uh, how do we handle the car fires afterwards um, and the residual water. The, questions, uh, the question marks is, uh, is many and uh, maybe we can sort them out today. Um, and of course, we also have other battery, fire, battery fires. Uh, a lot of solar panels are installed around the, uh, around the homes today. And together with this, the uh, quite big battery packs in, in, in closed room and, and so on. Uh, and of course, we have a lot, a lot of other transport, uh, transports like uh, bicycles and uh, mopeds and so on. So. Uh, Please welcome P.O. Malmqvist. Hi. Hi, thank you very much. You're from the Swedish uh, Contingency Agency and uh, you have worked with a project around this problem and issue with uh, uh, battery fires. The, Please tell us. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, we, we, have had, uh, we have seen that there are lots of tools available that can get water into the battery packs. We have seen car manufacturers that have made solutions to get water into the battery packs. Uh, but we haven't seen any uh, real studies where you have compared the tool and seen if they are effective or not. So okay. that's what we've been looking at in this project. The project was about uh, trying to put out fires in lithium-ion battery packs uh, and do it uh, to, to see if it's possible to do it in a faster manner that the, uh, than the recommendations are today. Uh, and to start with, to, to understand what's happening inside a battery pack. This is uh, a burn where we have a few battery cells in a module and we're igniting them. And when you look at that you can see that sometimes it's a thermal runaway and sometimes it's just a regular fire heating up the cells just adjacent to the burning cells. And if we get water in between the cells or onto the cells, we can cool that enough to stop the spreading of the propagation of the thermal runaway. We are not extinguishing a, a continuously uh, an ongoing thermal runaway in one cell, maybe, but we are at least stopping the spread from cell to cell. Uh, before we did this, we, we had to make a risk assessment uh, about making holes and injecting water into a battery pack. Uh, there are lots of myths and there are also some facts that we need to take into account to know if we could do this in a safe manner. Uh, and we studied, we had, had car electrical experts uh, studying the electrical hazards for the firefighters. And uh, they concluded that uh, it's possible to make hole in battery packs. We found two exceptions uh, where we had to take precautions, uh, but we could handle it uh, by doing this. One was that, that we uh, 
should never have the car connected to a charging station while doing this. And the other was that we should not touch the car body and the, the uh, tool if it was a conducting tool at the same time. Uh, and also by using only recommended tools that, that manufacturers uh, or the fire brigade have hazard assessed. In that way we can be sure that the electrical hazard is, is uh, dealt with. The toxic smoke we considered and uh, found that uh, if we use the regular PPE with the SCBA that will be good enough. Uh, we will be safe uh, in that way. Arcing from the electricity uh, is not a problem for the fire service. That will happen inside the battery pack or at the uh, surface of the battery pack and uh, that will not affect the firefighters working with this uh, method. Jet flames we dealt with by uh, looking for where we had jet flames and saying that those areas are hazardous areas and we positioned ourselves in other areas. And also we had a backup nozzle to uh, protect the firefighter working uh, at the moment with uh, close to the ba battery. Uh, and the explosion hazards in this case uh, was not something we had to, to deal with since we were out in the open and we had battery packs and they are made to handle internal explosions. So when you look at this and, and uh, you start thinking that we could use this method. Let, let's do, let's do it on the next call. Well, you shouldn't because what we are presenting from MSB is not a complete method. It's tests we have made on battery packs. Uh, successful tests, but still it's not a complete method. And it's not you as an individual firefighter who decide this. It's your employer that says, now we're gonna work with this and then they get the right tools and the right right training to do it. And the extinguishing equipment we tested was the Milro uh, lance. It's a lance that uh, floods water into the battery. You, you pound it into the battery pack and the nozzle tip will flood water in the battery pack. We looked at the cold cut Cobra uh, cutting extinguisher. We wanted to try the Rosenbauer uh, jack extinguisher, but we couldn't get a hold of that one uh, to the test uh, times we had. And then we had a regular fire axe, and together with that we used a, a small diameter hose with a copper tubing, and we also used a regular straight stream nozzle to get water into the battery pack. The trials we did was, uh, we started on a low level. level. We had three sub-packs with four modules, 26 kilowatt hours each. And in all the tests we made, we had 100% state of charge to made, make it as worst case as we could. And the first test we're gonna see here is the cutting extinguisher on a small pack. And you see here the jet flames coming out from the vent openings on, on the battery pack. Uh, and what we wanted to achieve here was we wanted to have fire spread from one module to another and we used a thermal imaging camera to see when that had happened. It turned out to be very hard. Uh, so we didn't uh, succeed with, with having a fire spread in our first two experiments we did. Uh, but we got fire spread within the first module and you can see here what I was talking about, the dangerous zones, that we can for certain say that we should not be on the left side of the battery pack. So what we did with the thermal imager was to try to figure out where the hotspot was and then have the cold cut uh, Keoba make a hole on that position. To get the hole done, we used abrasive to, to uh, get it cut and then we just flooded it with plain water. And plain water is, is uh, by the way, what we used for all experiments and it worked perfectly fine. No additives at all. So now the, the uh, firefighter is 
started to making the hole and since it's a thin sheet metal it will take a very short time. You can note here that there is no smoke showing right now but we still have a propagation of the thermal runaway going on inside the battery pack and you will see that we get a lot of steam coming out right now from the battery pack and that is due to the water flowing getting closer to the uh, hot cells and, and uh, steaming from that. And now we're just flowing with uh, water and uh, as you can see it doesn't get very dramatic. Uh, it turns out that, that uh, the fire is out. We inspected with a thermal imager and when we saw the temperature was stable around 50 degrees C, 120 degrees F, uh, we were uh, satisfied that we had uh, handled the fire. We observed for 15 minutes in all cases. Uh, and after that the battery pack was put away for three days until it was time for analysis. And the analysis showed that we had two modules with full uh, voltage, the 24 volt ones. And in this case we had two modules with 20 volts each. So we have saved a lot of cells by putting the battery fire out. And that means not only that we are you know, making it a fast uh, operation, it also means that we don't have all the heavy metals and all the pollutions from the battery cells that would come out if you let it burn. The second test we did was on the mill, with the mill lamps on a small pack. Again, four modules, 26 kilowatt hours. Uh, same principle, we thought we were going to have a uh, fire spread from one module to another, but it worked out that we didn't. It was very hard to see this with the thermal imager. So we started a little bit early, but as you can see on the voltage readings, we saved three modules completely and we had 16.7 volts left on the one that was burning. We stopped the propagation, uh, both in the module that was burning from the beginning and we stopped it spreading to other modules. The third test we did was with an axe and a copper pipe. And here it's interesting to see the difference. When we flood water simultaneously with, uh, with making the hole, which we have done in the first two tests. In this test we're going to first make a hole with, a copper pipe, uh, with an axe and then we're going to flood it with water uh, from the copper pipe and the small diameter hose. Here it was, since we were going to work uh, very close to the uh, battery and we had no water flowing at the same time, here we had some extra observations for the firefighter doing this, uh, making the hole, to make sure that, that if we got jet flames in uh, the direction of the firefighter, then we would uh, uh, then we would spray him with, with water. And here you see, I thought I was going to hit a cell that was uh, already burnt from the thermal imaging image. But it turned out there was an unburnt cell, but it's no big deal. We hit the cell, we got some flames, uh, and uh, it's, it's like a very controlled situation, I would say, in, the, in this case. Uh, making the hole bigger so it can get the uh, the hose into the uh, into the battery pack, and as soon as we start flooding with water, you will see that there is an immediate effect on the uh, fire. And also in this case, we we had uh, full success when we measured the voltage. We we had had a spread to the second module. We had 5 volt in, in the one that where we started the fire. We had 16 volts at the, the uh, module where it was spread to. And we have two modules where we prevented fire spread to all over. The third test we was going to try was a real battery pack. Uh, 24 modules, 67 kilowatt hours, 100% uh, state of charge again. And what you should look here, there is a a myth or a, a thought that if you uh, that you have to hit the correct cell that is burning uh, and as you will see here we have flames on both sides of the battery 
behind the smoke you can see some some flames uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to get water in one hole and it will flow all over the battery and in that way we will we'll have the fire put out so here we start adding the water we have flames coming from both sides of the battery pack and immediately we uh, quenches the flames on this side of the battery and after a while when the water have made its job now it stops coming flames from the other side as well and in this case where we had same good success you can see on this image here that we have green numbers and red numbers the red numbers are the one where we have zero voltage the modules are completely destroyed but all the green numbers is where we have voltage left and that means that we have cells that we prevented from starting to burn unfortunately i cannot show you the the video of the full car but we uh, tested with a full car as well uh, 27 modules 75 kilowatt hours 100 percent state of charge and what we did here was we wanted to have a timing that made it like a real life scenario so we had 15 minutes burn time before we started to extinguishing uh, and and when we did the before we did this we have to choose the tools we had two tools that are approved by the manufacturer it was the mineral lens and it was the cold cut system Kioba. we choose the the Kioba due to that we were missing the the uh, extension uh, pipe to the mineral lens uh, and we wanted to be able to reach into the middle of the car if we wanted that without touching the car body at the same time as we touched the tool. And the results was uh, really good. We had the car completely involved in fire after 15 minutes and we extinguished, extinguished the fire with a combination of an ordinary nozzle and the cutting extinguisher. Uh, totally we used 750 liters of water which is 200 gallons uh, and a total of 10 minutes and the interesting part is that it only took 4 minutes and 240 liters of water which is only 65 gallons of water to extinguish the battery pack that's a big difference between what today's car manufacturers are recommending as a method that they suggest and again the green numbers here speak for themselves we have a lot of cells and modules that are uh, intact after uh, the fire and after we put out the fire we observe the fire for 15 minutes uh, if we would have new smoke new sound or we have an uh, increase in temperature then we would add some water but it, we didn't have to do that very many times it was just like two two times maybe during all the tests we did we had to add some some water the last thing i'm going to talk about is this if it's possible to predict the dangerous zones and the reason i'm saying dangerous zones is because there is no safe zones around a burning vehicle uh, by by nature but if we look at where we have lots of smoke and lots of flames coming out and if we observe that before we do our operation we can see that we have certain zones that are more dangerous and that's what we did and we placed us where we have had the least uh, jet flames uh, during that process and the further work we will do from from uh, swedish civil contingencies agency is that we will work on a guidance with the lessons that we have, have learned from the tests we have made. Uh, and that guidance we hope will be done by the summer of 2023. Thank you very much. All right, interesting, Peo. Uh, interesting report and interesting job that you have done. Um, when I look at this and when I hear it, uh, it seems quite uh, the same as some constructional fires uh, that we, we uh, actually handle today. Um, the problem with constructional fires for us is to actually find the right compartment. Is it the same with the battery fires? 
in cars? Yeah, I would, I would say, but, but it's, it's also in that way easier because it's such a small area. Uh, what you should be aware of then is, is the rescue sheets that the car manufacturers do. Uh, there are different kind of battery constructions. You can have different compartments, several compartments in one battery pack or mm -hmm. several battery packs in a car. Mm -hmm. And that is vital information to know that you can get the water flowing. The other thing that is completely different from a structure fire is the electrical system. Uh, in a structure fire we have a grounded, earthed electrical system. Here we have a free-flowing system which actually makes it better for us from a safety perspective. Mm. Because to be in danger as a firefighter you have to be a part of the closed circuit between the plus and the minus on the, from the battery pack. All right. Uh, and that's better than having a grounded system where you only need to be in contact with the ground and one of the faces from the, from the uh, circuit. Okay, but, uh, because it, it seems a little bit uh, nervous to actually ground a tool into the battery. Yes. Uh, is there any risk at all that we can get current or voltage in, 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 in our personnel? Yes, yeah, ab absolutely. There are risks uh, and you should uh, never put a conducting tool into a battery pack uh, without knowing exactly what you're doing. And in our guidance, what we have found uh, that we probably have in the guidance that is coming is to only use tools that are approved by the manufacturer. Mm. Uh, because in that way you get an extra level of safety that you need. Mm. Uh, as, as you saw in those videos, I, I um, used an axe to make a hole in a battery pack. And that is not a method we recommend. No, it's or, quite brutal actually to make a hole with an axe yeah, straight uh, into the battery. But I felt very confident that, that I could do that in a safe manner. All right. Uh, because here we had a setup where we know the battery, we know the, the setup, mm. we know how the electricity would flow. Uh, and. Uh, the main risk, I would say, in this case that we had here was the jet flames. Mm. And as you noted, we used a pike axe, not, not uh, an axe where you could get flow mm. uh, shooting away in different directions. Here, here the flow would go straight up in the air. So that was also uh, made by design in, in the test mm. to use that. Yeah, interesting. Uh, one other thought is um, uh, in this test and this picture to show an open battery. Uh, uh, stripped out battery from from uh, there's no car around it. Um, is it hard to us to actually know if there's a fire in the battery? How do we know if if we have a fire, not uh, only the common car fire? And and how do we get into the battery? I mean, there's seats and there's uh, uh, all other stuff in a in a car that burns. Yeah, uh, that's a very good question because the first thing you need to do is to know that batteries in uh, electric vehicles are often very well designed. They are designed to be able to handle a single cell failure, which means that you can get a fire call about a car fire in an, an EV and you get there and there is nothing showing. Mm. In that case you should never make a new hole in the battery because maybe the car is handling that by itself. All right. uh, the, the other thing is, is to observe where the flames are coming from. Uh, and if you have jet flames, then you can be pretty certain that it's, it's some kind of, of uh, non-fossil fuel vehicle. Mm. It could be a, a gas car as well. Yeah. But, but uh, this is where you need to take your time and if, if the vehicle is placed where it's not, uh, there are no people in danger, uh, no buildings in danger, take your time, observe, try to find out what kind of vehicle it is. Uh, if there is nothing showing uh, and they say they have seen smoke, it could be this kind of, of uh, single cell failure. Mm. Observe where you have the jet flames. and. If you have a completely burning car, then the, the seats and all that will be no problem because uh, they will burn away. Burn uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, 
but if if you don't have that mm -hmm. you you can be helped by using a thermal imager trying to observe where you have the hotspots mm -hmm. and that will give you a clue it will be it's very hard to interpret and say this is the place where the cell mm -hmm. is failing but you will get a clue about where to start and maybe together with crash card information and yeah. on all that also of course absolutely yeah. uh, and and you would also don't be afraid to start over again there is a, I would say a myth about this that you have to to uh, hit exactly where the battery yeah. cell that is burning is located uh, and if you do this if you flood it with water for a couple of minutes and you don't get any effect start over again try a new place all right uh, it's no big deal that you make holes in new cells as mm. you saw when we made, made mm. new cells with the axe mm. it was no big deal so, so I would say that with EV fires, if we start looking more into the method of flowing car mm. uh, batteries with water, we, we have this kind of airbag moment, I would call it. Mm. If you remember when we got the airbags, yeah. everybody was yeah. very afraid of airbags uh, and it was dangerous uh, and lethal to yeah. do anything yeah. with a car because it was an airbag. Yeah. And I think we have the knowledge today that make us be able to start making methods mm. flooding batteries with water. All right. So is there any way that we can make it worse when we start to extinguish uh, and work with a with an EV fire? To, to make it worse, I would say the car is already totally damaged. Uh, there is no value left in the car mm. unless it's a single cell failure. Uh, and that's where you have to build a method to prevent you from making holes and destroying cars for single cell failures. Uh, but except from that, I can't see that, that we're making it worse. Maybe even, even for ourselves, uh, for the safety and... Th that's where you have to build a safe method. Yeah. Uh, and, and by do, doing that, either by having the employer make a full hazard analysis of the tools you already have, mm -hmm. or by, by using tools that are on the market where the, the uh, seller can can teach you how to use them mm. uh, I, I can't see that we could make it worse uh, in that case no uh, before EV fires came uh, across our our, our subject uh, we were talking about a lot of the environment and taking care of the water residual, residual water, water runoff from, from cars. Um, what about this? Is it still better to, be, to let an EV fire burn or is it better to actually extinguish it? Okay, um, here I'm gonna speculate because I don't have any report that says one or the other. But just considering the amount of battery cells that we could save by putting out the fire in the battery pack, we are preventing a lot of toxic uh, substances coming out. Right. Uh, then you could always uh, say that, well, we'll let it burn in that way. We, we, uh, we don't have to risk anything. But I mean, that's our job. We're not gonna let things burn just mm because it's burning. There should be a reason for having it, uh, let it burn. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, now since we know that we actually can do something about the battery packs, I, th I think we should if we can, in, right. a safe, in a safe manner. Yeah, sounds reasonable. Okay, Ron, the, the uh, construction of fires, construction fires in, in, in buildings, uh, it seems, uh, it seems uh, quite the same actually, uh, still for me. Can we, can we already use our methods around construction of fires into battery fires? What, what I would say is they are very, very different, mm. but, but our PPE that we have uh, when we are in a building will be good enough to fight an EV fire. Mm. Uh, the SCBA we are using are the same and everything. But one thing I should, I would like to point out is that sometimes we lose a structure because it's impossible to put it out or we use the wrong tactics or we do something wrong and we lose it. 
And I would say that we will have the same thing here on, on uh, cars. There will be cars where the battery construction is not made for this method mm -hmm. and it will not work. Mm -hmm. But we're in the beginning of the process of learning mm -hmm. uh, and that means that, that we will lose some fire. The important thing here is that we learn from it and share that knowledge so that others can learn from yeah. it. Uh, and I think that's the way forward here. Yeah. Sounds reasonable. All right. Thank you, Peo. Thank you very much. For this lecture. Thanks. And let's go on with uh, our, uh, our other guests. All right. Uh, together with Peo Manquist, uh, also Daniel Scott from Coca Systems. Hello, David. Hi. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. Has been involved yes. uh, with some uh, with the tests and yep. also around the methodology yes. with using the Cobra. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Please tell us. Uh, we, um, I think, in total, we tried the Cobra on about uh, ten batteries, mm -hmm. battery packs, uh, smaller, larger ones, uh, hybrid and full electric, and also we finished the product, uh, the project, with a full vehicle. All, All right. right. Interesting. Yep. Let's hear. Okay. Hello everyone. Um, as David said, I'm, I'm Daniel. I work at Cold Cut Systems and I'm going to tell you about uh, the method that we've uh, developed. Uh, PO talked about using different tools. This is going to be specifically about the, uh, the Cold Cut Cobra. Um, I think the first question you need to, to ask yourself, uh, which again PO mentioned, is, is it, uh, if we have an electrical vehicle, is it just the car that's burning or is the battery involved? And uh, as you can see on the picture now, we have this, uh, um, these pictures to explain the, the, the methodology you should use. So if, uh, if we look uh, to the right, we can see it's only the car involved, it's not the battery. We don't see any signs, we don't hear the popping sounds, we don't see any jet flames. Uh, just the car involved, just extinguish it as you would a regular car. If, however, we do get these signs, uh, the popping, the jet flames, uh, the very high temperatures and the fireworks, um, then you need to consider how you're going to um, extinguish, uh, extinguish the car and the battery. Um, sometimes it might be appropriate just to let it burn, and then we take the left-hand side. But if you want to make, uh, if you've made the risk assessment and you believe it's safe to use the Cobra, uh, then you can do it and then you'll go down to the right hand side and then you'll need to follow the steps that we're about to talk about. Um, so the first thing is always the risk assessment. assessment. Ensure that everyone's uh, got full PPE on and uh, breathing apparatus. We recommend the fan. Um, we did that in the beginning because when we started this project it was believed that the the gases were very, very poisonous and uh, you shouldn't be in there even if they could uh, go through the, the PPE. We now know that that's not the case, they're not as, as dangerous as we believed in, in open spaces. Uh, we recommend three act, active, uh, actively working on the fire. We recommend uh, someone with a thermal image camera that can identify if and where the battery is burning, identify the hotspots. Then we have the Cobra operator and then we have the branch operator. Three people. There will be others in the background. We have the pump operator and the officer, maybe even more. Um, so we look for the hot spots. Um, this is much easier once we've extinguished the fire with the with the or the car fire with a regular hose. Um, during the tests uh, that we did, we experience temperatures of up to 13 or 1400 degrees centigrade. So on the test we found it quite easy to identify where the battery was burning and see these hot spots. Once you've done that then apply the Cobra um, and you do this for as long as needed. Sometimes it might be two minutes, it might be five minutes. It's very important that um, the temperatures are assessed throughout the, uh, um, the incident because uh, as we've mentioned there is this temperature of around 50 degrees. Once we see the battery is stabilised and is around this temperature and we see no development over a period of about 15 minutes then we can consider that the battery is cooled and it's no longer propagating. 
So use the Cobra, use the tick. If you need to use more water, then do so. If not, then you can, uh, you can finish the instant. There's no exact time if it's going to take two minutes, five minutes, or ten minutes, so you know, we can't say that. So continuous uh, monitoring, monitoring with the camera. Um, once that's done, once you've decided that the fire is out, it's stable for 15 minutes at around 50 uh, degrees, um, just extinguish it, any remaining uh, fires within the car, uh, a regular car fire, that's what you would normally do. Um, and then you can hand over to the, uh, the tow truck or the police or the owner or whoever is uh, the applicable person. Um, it's as easy as that. Okay, so now we've gone through the, uh, the steps that you need to take uh, to use the Cobra to extinguish an electrical vehicle fire. Now we're going to watch a film uh, just so you can see what it looks like. Hope you enjoyed the film. Uh, so this is our suggestion that of how you can work with uh, the cold cup cobra to extinguish uh, electrical vehicle fires, which was based on the tests which we did uh, together with uh, with Peel and the uh, Swedish uh, Contingency Agency. All right, thank you, Dan. But still, mm. uh, some questions around the film here. Yep. Um, I saw that it was. Uh, it was not an actual car fire. Mm -hmm. uh, have you done some tests on, on an actual car that burns? Actually? Yeah, we've, uh, we did a test on a, a full electrical vehicle fire, uh, which was very successful. Um, it took us uh, about four minutes with the Cobra, and uh, the, the car fire was about six minutes, so it was 10, mi uh, ten minutes in total. But, but isn't it hard for the operator to operate the lens? I mean, he, uh, there's a lot of stuff in the car and yeah. uh, sometimes it fall, falls down yeah. and, and, and conceal the battery. I mean, the battery is concealed f f in, in a fresh car also. Yeah, no, um, yeah we get these high temperatures if the, if the battery is involved. So um, we, uh, it, it, it was quite obvious for us to see where the, where the hot spots were. But the important thing is just to get water in. Even if you end up in the wrong space, uh, we will still be getting water into the battery to cool it. And sometimes, um, in one of the cars, we did have the uh, the inside of the roof fall down, uh, the line, the roof line. Yeah. So, for example, that might hide the view of the battery for the camera. So that yeah. might be need to be removed. And um, 
you know, in, in real life anything can happen. Yeah. So you just need to deal with it as you would with any other fire. Uh, but what, what are your thoughts around, I mean, uh, Sweden, for example, is uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, small uh, fire stations around in Sweden and mm -hmm. also part-time fire stations with mm -hmm. uh, first intervention uh, vehicles mm -hmm. and, and people yeah. that, that are actually on scene mm -hmm. uh, themselves mm -hmm. for a couple of minutes or yeah. even more. Yeah. Uh, how, what are your, su your suggestions for these people to, what can they do? Uh, well, this is this is the method we've we've suggested, but um, I think also this is this is just the start. I mean, we've said three people. Mm. If you want to have five people or ten people, that's up to the fire service to make their risk assessment. Um, it may be okay to do it for two people. That's uh, I know your fire service uh, yeah. <laughs> works in that way. They may even come come alone for a few minutes. Yeah, uh, for starters, yeah. And if uh, if you've done your risk assessment um, before and actually at the instant, and you believe it's safe to do so, then that's the decision that you take. Mm -hmm. It's nothing that we can say. Be three, four, five, six people. That's that's not that's mm. not up to us to to decide. No, sounds reasonable also. Mm. Um, you have come across a couple of uh, different methods mm -hmm. uh, during these presentations. Mm -hmm. um, what are the main uh, advantages or disadvantages with the different methods? Um, well, I'd, I would talk about COBRA because that's that's the tool that, that I used on these tests. Um, I think the advantages are it's it's very light and easy to use, so you can move around the car. Um, if you need to go from a different side, it's quite easy to use. Um, it's quite ergonomic, it's uh, comfortable to use. And also we have the Lance extension, mm -hmm. so uh, which will give you an extra 75 centimetres away from the car. Uh, and this is uh, very good in terms of safety. As Peel mentioned, we, we, we don't want to touch the cross of the, or the, the, the body of the car unless we, unless we have absolutely have to. Mm. So we don't get this uh, this short circuit. Mm. Yeah, is it, we have some uh, electrical gloves actually yep. in our fire service to uh, uh, when we use uh, we use them to disconnect mm -hmm. uh, some yep. some things on mm -hmm. electrical buses and mm -hmm. all stuff. Uh, should we uh, appreciate uh, to to actually use use this on this type of fires also um, as a uh, yeah, operator? If, yeah, of course. If there's that's just making it extra safe. Okay. Um, that's, that's entirely up to you as a, as a fire service to decide that. All right. Yeah. Is the tool, uh, have you tested the tool for electrical current and voltage? For um, we've, we've worked uh, with electrical engineers and also the car industry. And um, using the, the Cobra, this, this method is safe. Uh, there are some things which you should avoid, which have already been mentioned, or some situations that should be avoided. Like uh, we said, never, on, never while the car is charging. Mm. And also, this is a car. This is a tool that should be used outside the battery. Uh, you should be. It will cut through the the body of the car. It will cut through the casing of the battery. Mm. But you should never be inside the battery with the tool. All right. We would never recommend that. But if you if you stay outside and you're leaning on the on the body of the car or the floor of the car, then it won't be a problem. All right. Um, one thought that I um, uh, get here is also. When we work in a construction of fires, mm -hmm. it's quite easy to to um, pierce through mm -hmm. several yeah, materials, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's hard to get into yeah. the compartment that actually mm -hmm. actually burns. Yeah, is, uh, isn't it the same uh, problem here yeah. that you can pierce through <laughs> the yeah, battery yeah, totally? I understand because yeah? uh, when uh, when you use the Cobra, we 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 do this on our training courses. We can pierce through maybe yeah. five six layers of, uh, of wood or, or plasterboard. Yeah, in a couple uh, of seconds. Yeah. Yeah, um, we never saw it on the tests mm. um, because the the body of the the battery is of often aluminium, mm. and then you have the battery itself, um, and we only use the abrasive in the beginning. All right. Um, I'm guessing that when it hits the battery, then the water starts to break up. Yeah. And so it doesn't pierce the bottom of the battery, or the or the, the even bottom with of the abrasive. Car. Yeah, the, I can only say what we've seen. Yeah. Uh, and even on the the standalone batteries, yeah. that um, were just on on pallets, we mm. didn't we didn't see it go through the the bottom, and we were holding the lance uh, static. All right. So uh, the answer is uh, no, as 
according to our experience. Is it possible to pierce through through the battery with the water? Um, only? We never Without tried it. We never, we never tried it. Okay. So I can't answer that question. Because of uh, aluminium, you said the, the casing was aluminium. Yeah, yeah. The ones that we used. Uh, so we always. But that's what uh, a general recommendation for for cover is. If you're piercing, always use abrasive. All oh, right. Unless it's very very thin material like plastic or yeah. thin wood. Maybe. Yeah. But all, I would always say use abrasive. All right. Yeah. Uh, okay, we we have pierced through the battery yep. in the correct way. Yes, we have found the battery. Yep. For how long? For how long should we go on with the water flow? Uh, how long is a piece of rope? All oh, right, <laughs> uh, there we, have, we have no answer from that. Oh. Uh, and uh, just the same as when we talk about uh, cover on construction fires, it's up to the the operator and the officer to decide that. Mm. Uh, so the answer is when you get the desired effect. So when you see that the battery is down at a low temperature, around 50 degrees and that it's stable, because if you see it starts climbing up 60, 70, 80, 100 degrees, then it's still propagating. Mm. So uh, if it's a few cells, maybe it would be enough with a minute, or if it's a module yeah. a bit longer, if it's uh, several modules, then maybe you need five, 10 minutes. Mm. So it's not an exact science, and I can't give you a, an exact answer for that. Okay. So it's when you're happy. Yeah, yep. sounds fair. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, thank you, Daniel, okay. uh, for this uh, interesting lecture. Good, thank you. Any time. We have heard a couple of interesting thoughts and, um, and uh, facts around the EV fires. Uh, now we are actually going to hear an actual case Hi. from Hova Hage from Vestfold Interkommunale Brandwesen ja, in Norway. In Norway. Yeah, yeah. great. Welcome. Thank you. Um, you have had a fire on your fire service in an electrical vehicle. Yeah, it was uh, this winter. Uh, we got a call for a garage fire uh, late in the evening. Uh, it took us about uh, 20 minutes to go to the, to the site. We came there with three uh, engines. And uh, after a while of putting out the, the main fire, my uh, officer asked me, if we could use the Cobra to put out uh, uh, the fire in an electric car. All oh, right. So, so in some part of the incident, you you actually found a fire in the battery. Yeah. How how did that occur? What did you see? Uh, what we saw was that first of all, it was five cars in the garage, All right. which were totally uh, burned out. Everything was burned out. Yeah. Um, when I approached the, the electric, car, electric car, uh, I could see the uh, uh, sort of sparks and small explosions coming from the rear end of the, the car. Mm. Uh, and it was, it was a lot of fire, heavy fire. All right, so this car was burned out totally? Yeah, ins from, from starter? Yeah, from inside, inside the car was, uh, all well, right. everything was burned out. Okay. So it's just uh, the battery case that I could see the, the fire. So did you see the battery case or did you see some part of the battery case or uh, how did you find it? I saw the whole fire, I saw the whole battery case from behind of the car uh, through the hatch. Yeah. Uh, and I saw that the fire was coming up and a, a lot of sparks and small explosions. Mm. So the first time I've ever seen that was a little bit uh, frightening. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, after putting out the, the main fire in the garage, um, my officer asked me if we could use the, the Cobra to put out the fire in the battery. In the, uh, um, I could see the fire coming up from the from the rear end of the battery. So I thought, well, I'll give it a try, but we don't have any procedure doing putting out fire with the Cobra no. yet. Mm. So uh, I said, yeah, I'll give it a try. Mm. Uh, and I also felt that I was safe because the fire had uh, burned down the, the, the roof yeah. of the garage. So I wasn't inside anything, and the the, the car was uh, it was quite it was quite easy to get uh, to get close enough to the to the car. So uh, so right now uh, in, in the time scale, uh, the whole garage is is extinguished by you. So uh, it, it is most of it. Okay. Yeah. So there there's no fire anywhere around you or something. Not like. not around where I was working, but on, okay. on the sides. So uh, we were uh, uh, we were ten guys working yeah. on on the site. Yeah. But uh, my officer and me, we were close to the car. Yeah. 
and he was using the tick and uh, and he said if you want to go and uh, pull out, put out the fire he said give it a try mm. so i uh, did uh, i uh, I, th I thought that let's give it a try yeah yeah and what so happened when you when I approached the car, uh, I saw that the, the fire was uh, quite heavily fired in the in the rear end of the car, with small explosions and uh, and uh, with a lot of noise also. Mm -hmm. Flames? Did you see flames? Also? Yeah, a lot of flames, uh, mm -hmm. sparkling and flames going in all, all kind of directions. Mm -hmm. uh, I took the uh, the cobra and uh, uh, through the hedge yeah. the edge of the, the car and started to, to attack the fire. Mm. Uh, after uh, four or five minutes, I could see that it, it cooled down quite easily. Uh, I used the tick again and saw that, okay, the, it was still hot and I got about uh, 700 degrees. So I thought about uh, trying to cool down the, the, the battery a little bit more. So I kneeled down behind the car, uh, find a good uh, position. And then I attacked uh, the battery from the back of the car, All right. and through, uh, and then towards uh, the front of the battery part. So you could see the battery from from the behind lower part of the car. Was it uh, exposed? No, or? it wasn't exposed because uh, it was like a, a lid around it, mm -hmm. uh, like a box around it. Mm -hmm. But I could see using the the tick, I could see that it was quite hot. So I thought uh, that I knew that that must be the the, the, the main battery. Yeah. yeah. So I was sitting there and uh, attacking the uh, the battery, and uh, I could see then quite easily that the the fire was putting out and th the energy was going down right. quite easily. Uh, a lot of smoke, or yeah, the smoke, uh, the color of the smoke used mm. went from sort of gray black to more uh, a gray white. Mm. So I I understood that the the moist. Uh, starting to uh, did the did the job in, inside the, the battery. Okay. And uh, then um, uh, also using the tick uh, at the same time as the the cobra, you can see the temperature was uh, going down quite yeah. easily. All right. And uh, I've used about uh, five to six minutes in that position, mm. and I thought, okay, let's uh, see if we can do something more. So maybe I should go to make an attack from the side of the car uh, to make a barrier or a, yeah. yeah. So uh, I went to the right hand side of the car uh, and did another attack there to uh, to see if I could stop uh, the thermal runaway mm. in, in the battery. Uh, so I did. Uh, so you, you made another hole in, into the battery case yeah. From, but but from the side from the right hand side of the car okay yeah uh, through doors and all that stuff or uh, did you uh, could you open a door to came I could go I, I could open I could open the the rear uh, door so I took it just above the, uh, the the wheel yeah yeah so I uh, sort of in the angle in there mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know if I was hitting the right spot or the the, the battery mm -hmm. but uh, after a uh, four or five minutes uh, I stopped and I put the, the cobra down and mm. used the tick and I could see that actually the temperature on the the, the battery was going down yeah. and uh, there was less less smoke so yeah okay so it's kind of a trial and error thing yeah, you have absolutely. to try it and, yeah. and then yeah. then see with the tick afterwards okay yeah. uh, and some of my colleagues there had to be uh, at, the, at the fire site mm. because uh, they had to take care of the, the building and if anything happened. Mm. And they told me uh, the morning after that uh, after about four or five hours, the temperature uh, increased and they could see not flames but smoke coming up oh from, right. the, from the battery. Okay. So what they did, they just took a hose and put it into the car mm. and put the water on and just let it flow and cool it, and cool it down. All right. And uh, after, uh, yeah, so uh, that in sh in short time what happened. So so w uh, what uh, things did you see when you used the Cobra uh, to actually um, 
find out that now we have extinguished it? Uh, what what made you certain that it was totally extinguished uh, first when of you all, were on site? Uh, first of all, it was the the, the fire went out. Yeah, uh, the sparks disappeared, mm. uh, and uh, the color of the smoke, the steam came up. Mm. Then I understood that okay, the, the water is now. Uh, 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 doing its job inside yeah. the battery, and uh, the uh, and also the color of the smoke uh, disappeared. Mm. It was just a sort of a white gray, uh, and also the using the tick and the, the temperature went down. So, yeah. Yeah. so, so uh, if you hadn't had the tick uh, thermal emitting camera, mm -hmm. it should uh, it would be hard to absolutely. But it's much easier to use the, the tick to find the hot spots yeah. inside the car. Yeah. Uh, and I wasn't, uh, I wasn't inside the car, but I was standing always on the outside mm -hmm. the car and, and make uh, and, and looked for the hot spots. Yeah. yeah. So I would find the hot spot, and then I used the the cobra and did the attack. Do you know how much water in total you used for for the actual battery, not for the whole car, but for the actual battery? Uh, if you say that, if you have a Total time of uh, ten to twelve minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Times sixty. Sixty. Yeah. Liters per minute. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, uh, so Six hundred liters. liters. Yeah. Approximately. Yeah. All right. So. Uh, uh, does the water stay in the battery, uh, or do you have a lot of water runoff uh, after uh, this kind of intervention? Uh, that is quite hard to say because uh, earlier, e earlier during the the fire. The other uh, firefighters were using uh, a lot of water, yeah. so everything inside the garage was mm. uh, full with water. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, hard to say. Hard, hard to say. Yeah. yeah. But I understand that I, I was, I was hoping to to fill up the, the battery chamber. Yeah. yeah. Full of water. Uh, did you, in some time in this intervention? Feel that you went through the battery because we have uh, earlier <coughs> talked about uh, uh, like putting your battery fires with the with the cobra, uh, it should be hard and, and it looked in some way to use it as a construction of fire. And, yeah. and in a construction of fire, it's quite easy to shoot through things. Yeah, is it? Uh, did you I, experience I, I, that? Yeah, I found it quite easy because when I found my if. When I found when I found a good uh, stand, yeah, uh, and I was pointing at one certain point, mm. and I d did attack. Uh, I know how to to pierce through a, a hard uh, uh, surface. Uh, surface, or, yeah. 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 So I was moving the the cobra a little bit from side to side. All right. So just a couple of seconds, I was mm. through, and you can also. Uh, just before that, uh, the water and the abrasive was uh, yeah. going up in the air, yeah, and then yeah. suddenly it, 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 it just disappeared into the battery. Yeah. Yeah. So and, and then you released the ab abrasive uh, button, or did yeah, you after, uh, shoot abrasive all the time? No, I was uh, when I f when I noticed that I was through the f the, the layer, yeah. the, the the box of the battery. Yeah. I released the abrasive and just right. pushed on with water. And you used the same hole then to. All the time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so then you just uh, used two holes to get water in. Yeah. One on the back and one on, on the, the side. Front. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Mm. But in in the beginning, I was uh, through the back of the car. Mm. I was just uh, using the uh, the cobra mm. through some holes into the battery case. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. I, because already well, existing holes. Yeah. Because yeah. Uh, you could see the the fire. Yeah. Was, uh, small explosions coming yeah. up there. So I was just. Uh, using the cobra and those hole, those holes, All right. but I made one hole in the back and one hole on the side. All right. All right. Did you feel safe doing this in intervention? Uh, absolutely. Uh, as long as I was, uh, I was never too close to the car, mm -hmm. uh, and was sort of outside because the roof of the garage was gone. Mm. Uh, but a little bit frightening. Yeah. But, uh, because of. Uh, because I've never done this before, mm. and uh, we don't have any procedures mm. how to do this. Mm. But uh, a little bit, a little bit frightened, but yeah. uh, I was very, very pleased and very happy in yeah. the end. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for this. It was uh, really nice to uh, hear an experience from from real life. Because um, as we told uh, you uh, earlier, we have a lot of electrical vehicles on our roads, but. Uh, 
in the end we don't have so much fires in them yet but the fires w that we actually have came across uh, is, is hard to get to because we, we often have to extinguish them in some way and, and that is uh, an issue for us. So yeah. thank you so much for your experience. Thank you. And that you share it, shared it with us. Yeah. Uh, Daniel. Yes. Hello David. Uh, three different uh, angles on this yep. issue. Mm -hmm. uh, until now we have, we have uh, been recommended from uh, different manufacturers and so on that to cool, cool, cool. Mm -hmm. With lots of water. With lots of water. And yeah. some manufacturers even uh, set an amount of 35,000 liters of water mm -hmm. to cool a battery pack. Yeah. Can, we, can, we, can we see now uh, a better way to use it? Yeah, well, the, the results that we were able to show, um, yeah. the, the complete car, that was uh, four minutes with a Cobra. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about 240 liters of water. So it's... Uh, it's a huge reduction. It's also a, a great benefit for the environment because yeah. we have less water to take care of. Yeah, and uh, time on the scene. The actual time, time, yeah, on the scene. time on the scene. Yeah. And also, if that water then has to be collected and then destroyed, yeah. uh, it's going to be a huge cost for, for someone, yeah. the, uh, the fire service or the council mm. or whoever. Mm. Yeah. So it's a, it's, a, it's a great saving for in, in many ways. It is. And actually, right now, we have demands on us uh, from different uh, different angles that actually mm -hmm. take care of our residual water yeah. right now. Yeah. So, in a normal car fire today, we, we actually have to uh, collect the water yeah, residual. Yeah, I think that's so uh, coming to Europe in uh, many countries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, <coughs> I have a feeling uh, of that uh, this is just the start of something. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yeah. Um, I think that. Uh, we, we, we must out and put out some fires mm -hmm. in, in real life. Mm -hmm. Yep, and this, uh, I mean, these tests we've done, this is, uh, we started two years ago, and this is when, this is was the start for us as well. Yeah. So, um, you know, we don't want this to, or we're not saying that this is the, the ultimate way to do it. We're mm -hmm. hoping that the fire services, when they see this, can actually mm -hmm. develop the method themselves. Yeah. So in a year or two years time, this will be much better. Mm. So this really is just the start, we think. Yeah, so we are hoping for a couple of EV fires now. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you can think of it as uh, the same as building fires. Yeah. You know, 200 years ago, we probably went in with a bucket and yeah. uh, you know, a, a cloth around our face, but now we, we do it in, in a much different way. Yeah. And we want this to be the same with uh, the EV fires as well. Yeah. Yep, so we've uh, we've talked about this method for the electrical vehicle fires, which we're suggesting is a, a good method to use. But uh, you know, don't forget that the Cobra can be used for many other things: for high rise, for attic fires, for cellars, silos, hidden fires, fires in, in construction. It's got many many uses, um, and it's the, the primary. Uh, the primary benefit is the firefighter safety. We're doing this from outside the building and outside the, outside the vehicle. And if you want to know uh, to know more about this, then uh, go in and check our website, and also follow us on social media. Thank you for watching the webinar. Thank you.